From War to Peace is an idea that my late wife Sandra and I came up with probably uh, sometime in mid-2008. I had personally become aware of the availability of the copper cabling that runs underground, generally buried about six feet deep to be impervious to nuclear assault, and it runs in between all the nuclear missile silos uh, through those Air Force bases in the Midwest where we have intercontinental ballistic missiles. And so the idea of turning swords into plowshares, of turning bombs into beauty, uh, of turning war into peace is one that resonated with my wife Sandy, with me, and we thought this was sort of a remarkable opportunity. Uh, and we're finally actually coming to market with, uh, with our, our jewelry and soon some of our art. And we'll see if that idea resonates with the rest of the world. And I think it will. I think most Americans are fed up with endless war. When people are supporting or buying uh, from War to Peace jewelry, they, uh, they're buying American, they are buying a piece of history, and they're supporting a cause, you know, something that they can really believe in. And, uh, you know, and I, I really want to kind of try to create the, create the dialogue around this. I don't, I don't want people to feel just like they're supporting it. I want people to feel like they're actively engaging in the peace process by doing it, you know. Um, because the more of these beautiful little pennants that are out there in the world, uh, <laughs> the less there is of all the horrible stuff that it comes from, you know. So if we can just one pennant, one set of earrings at a time, just gradually take the bad, turn it into the good, um, have people looking pretty in the process, never a bad thing, you know. Because it's, uh, it's the purchase of a product that has a very specific association with a connected action. Right. And, you know, and that's got to be a big part of what this is about is we want to be able to create action. You know, we really want to be able to get people involved. We want to turn heads of folks that, you know, have not really given a lot of consideration to the peace movement or nuclear disarmament in their lifetime. Uh, we want to shoot for some some lofty goals and we want to be able to, you know, create a, um, you know, we want to be able to create a, a story that makes people feel like when they're working with our company or when they're buying or wearing our jewelry that they have actually physically contributed to the betterment of this world. Copper that we use comes from Montana. It's an intrinsically American product. The refined copper was made into the cabling that runs underground in between those nuclear missile silos through the Midwest, some of which have been disarmed. The silos themselves, these huge silos buried underground that go up to 300 feet deep into the, into the, the soil of the American prairie, they're generally uh, imploded with explosives, but left behind, often in these fields that farmers today still, pl still plant, uh, are miles, sometimes hundreds of miles, of missile cabling. That missile cabling is predominantly copper. We dig it out of the ground. We recycle it into its core components, and we take that copper and we alloy it into a bronze. We call it peace bronze because it comes from this remarkable source, what had once been part of the most violent weapon system ever conceived of in the history of man. And we take that copper, we, we make it into a wonderful peace bronze alloy, and from that peace bronze alloy, we cast works of peace, works of art, works of jewelry, personal art, if you will. The silver and the gold that we use in the plating on some of our pieces, uh, all of that is used and recycled. Uh, it all comes to us uh, from recycled sources. All the paper we use is recycled paper. All the plastics we use are biodegradable. We think that uh, recycling the violence of weapons of war uh, into the beauty of, uh, of works of peace and heart uh, is not merely exciting. We think it's sublime. Oh, is this one of those